Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Tweet Talk. Happy Monday, everyone. Happy Monday. So I had a gymnastic meet yesterday. I? Well, yesterday you weren't there and everybody, everyone was asking about you. Where is your wife? I, I made such a huge mm. impression on Saturday, I guess. Mm -hmm. Saturday was crazy. Saturday was crazy, but it was fun. And the kids did pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And they keep getting better all the time. They got me so excited that I couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> I was thinking of all really? the things. Really? After, after the competition, you were excited the, just out? Oh. Yeah, because, because what happens is they do well, you're still happy. You're and, coming back into the and gym they, and you're like, yeah. yeah and, and then you're planning what you're going to do mm -hmm. with them. Uh, to make it even better, Understood. you know? Yeah. So can we move this tweet talks thingy? Um, can that go in the upper right corner or oh, upper I, left? Corner? I don't know. Oh, we're not that fancy yet. Okay. We, well, I don't know how to do it. Hey, North Carolina. So, North Carolina. Oh yes. What am I? I don't know what I was thinking. Hello. Hey, hello, Darren. Darren. Welcome so, to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show. I hope that uh, you know we're waiting for a little bit for people to come mm -hmm. in and. And you know, we, we posted this everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were um, just talking about our weekend mm -hmm. um, and how crazy it was. And, um, you know, we had two back to back competitions on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, the first competition was okay. We just had one level. Then, second competition, which didn't start until 6 p.m. Um, we had two different levels, and they were on two different events, so it was mm -hmm. kind of um, uh, back and forth, running back and forth. Right, right. I, right. But, you know, and, and, and this is kind of strange, but I, I feel like I thrive under pressure like that, and it's, a ter <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. You should never want to be under pressure like that, and, and you know, you sh should be, like, even keel, but some it's, it's the, weird. Some of the kids are, are like that, too. They very, you know, hold back and reserve um, mm -hmm. at the gym, and then when they go to the competition, it's, like, all out. Yeah, you know? yeah. The, um, you know, after, and I want just want to recognize, you know, after we left the competition mm -hmm. on Saturday night, it was pretty late. It was um, 10, 15, 10, 20, 20, something like that when we left, and when we, we were like, where are we going to eat? Everyone's starving. I was starving. <laughs> the kids were starving. Yes. Their parents were starving because now they're not serving um, food at these competitions or little like bite foods like right, chips and stuff right. like that but not usually they serve like meatballs mm -hmm. and stuff and so we left and we went down the street about two miles away to um to the goshen diner. plaza diner in goshen new york shout out to the goshen plaza diner because they let us in at 10 at 10 o'clock they let us in at 10 o'clock and, and we had, had to be eaten and out by 10 30 and 10 30. we managed to do it right on the dot and oh, that um, was, so big out big shout out to fast. goshen plaza diner yes yes for, yes for being and, like and we 11 talk, of us and we talked yeah we're talking about how the team was there so. yeah we're like what should so we order they were like burgers and fries <laughs> So everyone got something simple, quick. I think a couple of the kids got pancakes, well, but you know that was much appreciated. Talking about competition, yeah, you know this uh, James Jefferson. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He came up with this idea, you know, and and he's the CEO of Glover. You know, um, we had literally rough shoulders with him. Really? Yes. You know, sometimes I don't remember everyone that I meet well, at it, these events. Well, I, I remember seeing him. Okay. But, you know, sometimes we were on the floor dancing and he was, oh. somebody <laughs> took a picture and he was right behind oh, us. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, um, you know, we meet so many people every day, you know, thousands of people from different venues and things like that. Yeah. But um, we got in touch through Facebook, and, and you know, when we bring him in, you're going to find out all the things that he does. You know, I was reading. It's amazing. I was reading. You were reading. I was reading, um, you know, because we have mm -hmm. things that are printed for, for every show, and I was reading, and it touched my heart what he is doing 
And you know, we like one of the subjects that Owas is yes, doing. That's yes, that's, really. That's really one good. of the reasons that that I oh, we gotta get him on, get him on. Okay, so we have some people here, so we're gonna bring him on. Yes, hey Daryl, I hope you have fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Daryl <laughs> is going to the NCAA gymnastics championships in Fort Worth. Oh, okay. He said he can't he, wait. This he weekend. has done that quite quite a bit, gone to a lot of different tournaments. So today's guest everyone watching we have james b jefferson on and this is some serious credentials that he's got as far mm -hmm. as fitness is concerned 34 years of martial arts experience mm -hmm. 250,000 hours of training students i don't know how he calculated that but he must have been keeping track <laughs> probably more than day that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. a master's degree in ex exercise physiology which that's what my brother is going for mm -hmm. certified sports nutritionist i think that is extremely important yes yes um trainer of amateur olympic and professional athletes okay and um, before awesome. we bring him on That's you know what i'm going to play a video you want to play his little his yeah video i'm going to play a video so people right, will cool. know what we're talking about all right okay on one mysterious island, 10 masters will train 16 warriors who come together from around the world to fight. And only you will decide their fate. Only one will be crowned the ultimate island warrior. Hey! Hey guys, how's it going? Good. I, I am super good. You know, you always block me out when we when we there. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> That's okay because that you know in the opening of the show you talked about pressure, and you know pressure is what creates diamonds. So don't worry. That's worry right. About it. That's right. I like that. Yeah. I out like of pressure will make diamonds. That's that's yes. that's correct. So James Jefferson, executive producer of Warrior Island and president and CEO of Global Proving Ground. Thank you so much for joining us on Tweet Talks tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome, awesome. Honey, do you wanna you wanna kick us off? Do I want oh sure. So um so you've been doing martial art for thirty four years, is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, my actually, you know, Warrior Island is not just a TV series and a and a blockbuster movie eventually, but it really is also a a comic book series. And I actually um, one of the characters in the comic book series is myself, and I am Ronan because I've been training all different kinds of martial arts. I never really had a master, so I've kind of learned a little bit of just about every kind of martial art you can imagine, and uh, it's it's kind of who I am. I love okay. that. Love that. Yeah. So. Um, the Warrior Island brand, it's going to be a movie, TV show, comic book series, and merchandise. Yeah, we've um, we started that. amazing. Uh, yeah, we started. Can you, hear, you guys hear me fine? We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. We started the journey back in 2012, uh, with the concept. I sat down with some of the some of the grandmasters of martial arts around the world, like the Black Dragon, Ron Van Cleef, um, Helson Gracie, Henzo Gracie, Dan the Beast, Severin. Um, Sifu Chow, Sifu Cliff, a lot of different um, names you recognize in the world of martial arts. And we mm -hmm. sat down because I had gotten irritated. I had a TV show where I was covering the UFC and I got really irritated at the disrespect and the dishonor and all the things associated where, you know, these fighters in the, in the, in the octagon were very, uh, well, first of all, they weren't being treated very well by Dana White. And they didn't show respect. So it, just, it was really upsetting me. So I sat down with the grandmasters of martial arts and I said, well, you guys invented this sport. You know, you invented um, mixed martial arts. And what don't you like about it now? What would you like to see back? So we started to, you know, write the ideas down. And, and Warrior Island, you know, came from all of those conversations. Um, obviously myself, with my experience and then being a huge fan of Enter the Dragon and and you know Saturday Kung Fu Theater and and all the things that I also like reality TV like Survivor and and shows and American Idol etc. So we said let's put you know just not reinvent the wheel. Let's kind of you know make something that everybody loves, but let's have an underlying message that is the tenets of martial arts to make a positive impact on society by bringing back these uh, these um, a code and we call it the Tiki Code. 
and each grand master has their own tiki, uh, whether it be like I'm the respect tiki, um, ginger lotus, you know, is the um, empathy tiki, and we have respect, honor, empathy, you know, all the tenants are there, but you know, work it with warriors. So instead of just getting random people and putting them on an island, mm -hmm. we search the world, have fighters try out in a video on YouTube, and have fans, millions of fans, vote for these fighters, mm -hmm. and then bring them to the island and have them work with the grandmasters of martial arts and teach them what it really means to be a warrior. Where it's okay. more somebody up than to knock them down. And, you know, that's what we've done. So the original movie was going to cost us about $34 million. And we were about 33999000 short at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided okay. to get our, we started to get our promoter's licenses in different states. And we started to um, actually hold mixed martial arts fights, making the fighters bow to each other. Um, making them respect each other's coaches and corners, making sure the fans were taught not to boo, but to cheer for the person that's losing and, and, and be, you know, more interactive. And we produced 34 fights around the globe. Um, our first fights were in Missouri. Then we moved to London, Arkansas, over back across the pond to Portugal. We were in Riga, Latvia, um, London. So we've been all around the world. We've produced 34 fights for NBC Sports. But we still wanted to get back to the root thing, which was actually producing – you know, the, the TV show, the docuseries, Warrior Island, and then lead it up to, you know, a full feature film. So along the way, we spent a lot of money and a lot of time, but we you know learned a lot of lessons as martial arts teaches you. And we finally have signed a TV contract where we can now produce the, um, the actual shows where we're going to take all the fights that were recorded. And then we're going to have the fans vote again. And we're going to have new live fights as well. And then all oh. the the TV network is going to take all the money from the advertising and use that to produce the actual TV docu-series. Okay. So, you know, we're probably about a year or so away from that to get all that done. Um, we're very lucky to have as I can't divulge who the screenwriter is, but the screenwriter for the movie has had four blockbuster Hollywood films. So that okay. was an announcement probably in the summer at some point. That's uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm blessed because of the people I'm surrounded by. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I've been very lucky to, you know, through people like Alan Goldberg at the Action Martial Arts Hall of Honors. Mm -hmm. He has introduced me to, you know, Jason Lau and a lot of other great mm -hmm. martial artists that have, you know, a lot of ideas and pull and respect. So mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a master of any martial arts. Um, I know a lot of martial arts and I've got a lot of good friends. <laughs> yeah, good. yeah. I love it how um, you guys are all just so loving and willing to work together and even with this interview you were asking you know if if you could bring um grandmaster ron van cleef on and he's kindly enough to join us tonight he's in our virtual green room so we're going to add him to the show my mentor all right hey beautiful aloha aloha aloha, <laughs> aloha. Yeah. how are you sir how's things james okay I'm great. <laughs> you look fit. You are an inspiration to me because, you know. Three days a week with my wife. She that's, that's, wants me to go to the gym. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. That's wonderful. That, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You are, hmm? go ahead. She's, She's tough. Tough. <laughs> yeah. She's, She's tired. <laughs> Well, we see you every year, and we take a photo. And, <laughs> and the first time that you saw me in a long time, you looked at me and you said, I know you. <laughs> but he didn't remember it from where, <laughs> which is OK, because I, it was at the Bullweiser um, fight a long, long time ago. Am I so Wow. wow. <laughs> That's a, we both had hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask you, how did you get involved with, with this? Um, with Warrior Island. Mm -hmm. Warrior Island, mm -hmm. yes. You know, unbelievable story. I, I moved to Hawaii in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I ran into James Helson. Ron Chiraki and uh, Kimi Tagawa, 
They mm -hmm. went to Turtle Bay Resort shooting uh -huh. footage for Warrior Island. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen Helson since I fought Hoyce in right. 1994 in the wow. afternoon. After I fought wow. Hoyce, he came over and he gave me a hug and kiss, right? Uh -huh. I, didn't, I didn't know him from anywhere, but he came over and he gave me a hug and kiss. <laughs> wow. And, and, and that's how you met? That's it. That's <laughs> it. You, carry, you know, Carrie Tagawa? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. What yes. a great guy. Great mm -hmm. guy. Yes. Okay. He, he seemed to a lot of healing and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. so I'm so happy to be involved with the Warrior Island. The whole concept is great. I mean, it's uh, Enter the Dragon and Bloodsport all together, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, really. That's a great description. That's a great description. I think what's oh. missing in what we see in martial arts today is mm -hmm. there's no respect. Everybody's talking caca before they fight. Right. It's a very crude and rude way of presenting martial arts. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the commissioner of the UFC. I left because it became too circus-like. I see, yes. I, I, I was the one that created the super fights, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had to fight a bad guy, you mm -hmm. know. I found Tank Abbott, and I found all these other <laughs> bad guys. Right. It it started to resemble wrestling, that way of uh, projection. And mm -hmm. I'm a martial artist. I was a martial artist for over sixty years, and I still believe that you have to have respect. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I'm I'm an MMA fan. Right. All the way. But most of the people I met through MMA, they don't really have the right kind of mental attitude that I got from t teaching and learning traditional martial arts. Mm -hmm. Right. Things like respect were part of the everyday. Part of the training, right. Mm -hmm. It isn't that way in MMA. They take a little karate, a little kung fu, a little Thai boxing, a little this, and then put it together. But they're, they're missing the mental and spiritual concept. Right. They're, wow. they're really missing that. And, and yeah. that's what's missing with all these type of events. They're just, I mean, it's boring to see people just punching and kicking and, and rolling on, on the ground. It's, it's boring. No matter how good they are, you see the same thing in every event. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some a press conference where guys don't have to get in the other space and start cursing and oh, I don't even like to watch the press conferences anymore. They, they're more like a circus show. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's terrible. They have to put seats, uh, you know, butts in the seats and they have to sell tickets and they have to do the pay-per-view. But I think that can be done with the right type of projection and mm -hmm. the right projection doesn't take anything away from the dynamite fighters but it gives each one a character and an individual it's not a debasement of martial arts which is what i see in mma today okay. mm. that's my 78 yeah. year old I, opinion on what that is i think you hit it right on the head i mean i don't even call it mixed martial arts i call it mixed up martial arts <laughs> But the um, you know even even fighters that fight to try out for the island they don't when they have these competitions sometimes the loser actually gets voted on by the fans because they show better character or better spirit it's not uh -huh. about the winner it's about who you are as a human being the uh, intriguing story that the the people at home want to learn about somebody about their character and about you know you know where they come from to where they how they got there yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I like that you're involved with the bullying. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, kids learn from what they see more than from what they hear. Mm -hmm. You know, like when, when I, even when I'm teaching gymnastics, they're very visual today. You know, especially mm -hmm. with, all, uh, with all the media. TikTok and, you know, yeah. They're very visual. Mm -hmm. So when they see these people um, talking, the way they talk, they think that that's the way martial art is. I know. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, it's unfortunate because we weren't taught that way. I mean, I grew up reading about you, and you know, and Chinese, you know, what is that? Chinese past. I was I was doing I was doing Japanese goju back then, 
when I was thinking about you doing Chinese goju. And I wanted to know, so I would look every magazine that you were in to try to learn Chinese goju. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I, I had moved off state from New York, you know. And back then, Moses Power, uh, Peter Orban, and uh, Aaron Banks, and all those people, you know, back then, that's where we were. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I just, I just want to jump in and say, you know, we, Ron mentioned, you know, about how he fought um, in the UFC and we're talking about the UFC. And I think he might be the sole reason that we ended up together. How was that? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. So for one of our first few dates, he comes over to my house because he knows I, I, I was, grew up watching, um, Shokazugi. My dad was a huge Shokazugi fan. And so he comes over to my house with his entire collection of USC. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> on, on VHS. Oh on VHS. And we just, we binge watched it. So I think you might be the reason that we oh, ended up together. <laughs> That's a story. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did some research, you know, mentioned the bullet a lot of research. I actually spoke to some of the top psychiatrists and psychologists in the world about mm -hmm. bullying. And I, and obviously, you know, interviewed and talked to some of the greatest martial arts artists that ever lived. Mm -hmm. And they all agree to a certain extent that the most important thing about fighting is not fighting, is the uh -huh. art of fighting without actually fighting. So the psychologists will talk about humor and how to deflect. And the mm -hmm. grandmasters will talk about confidence and you know things like that so i think it's you know we do have a tiki code that teaches the different tenets of martial arts and there's going to be you know within the comic books we're now we're going to be um uh publishing our sixth comic book uh in less than two weeks oh. we're all on the seventh one and they were very well received at comic-con which is millions of people wow. that are getting access to this so we believe through the comic book the the tv show and the movie we will be able to make a positive impact around the world and bring back traditional martial arts that because awesome. they, they're trying to take away all the guns. They want to do that worldwide. So if we're left with our with our bodies as our weapons or our self-defense, then we better know we're what we're doing our tools. And, and know what we're doing. So I think we're going to have a, a new dawn, um, a brand new awakening of mm -hmm. martial arts around the world in our lifetimes here. And um, we better start off on the right foot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, James, where did the idea for the comic book come into play? The comic, I, I really always loved comic books myself. Okay. And I met a gentleman named Robert Garrett a few years ago yeah. that said, hey, I can help you do a comic book for that idea. And I spent a lot of time with him and he, he taught me the business. Unfortunately, we lost Robert about two years ago. Um, he passed. No. But I, I for, for about three seconds, I thought to myself, oh, no, what do I do? And then I figured, no, I'll just go and see who Robert shared all the pictures with online. And I found all the artists, all the <laughs> colorists, all the people who do the, the writing. And they just, they you know, they reached into my mind and, and we kept creating the book. And, you know, Ron's one of the main characters in the book, the TV show and the movie. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, as well as uh, Helsin and Dan Severin and Steve Chow. And there's a lot of great martial artists that are involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we've gotten some some soft commitments from some people like Michael Jai White for the movie. Uh, right. We can't announce that officially. He just had mentioned right. it. He like to do it, but you know, obviously, we have to go through his channels and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. there's a lot we can do, um, and it's exciting. It's just it's been a long journey. We're now like you know in year nine. <laughs> it's been nine years of this. Mm -hmm. But um, we're, we this this contract that we just signed. We for don't quit. Oh, what's that? We don't quit. No. 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 no, you can't. You can't. I don't even know what that word is. <laughs> you say quilt? We're gonna, we're gonna you hold. You need a quilt. Quilt. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm I'm very blessed to have the friends and family that I call my martial arts family, and I I I, I spend every day very happy because of the people that I surround myself with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we see see you at the Hall of Honors. Always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I, I look back to some photos and, and I see like me and my wife are dancing and you in the back. Yeah, yeah, that happens a saw couple times. You saw me with Ginger Lotus, my, my soulmate, Nicole. Yeah, oh, okay, yes, nice. yes. 
So, James, um, how can we get the comic book? All the information can be uh, at warriorisland.info. Warriorisland.info. Or you can just go to Warrior Island Comics on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I don't do that TikTok thing. I don't know what that is. I don't do anything. <laughs> But. Not on TikTok, James. Come on. <laughs> Funny, if you want to guarantee that kids will leave a social media, parents go on it. Then the kids won't be there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Oh goodness. I just wanted to make sure you wrote that down. Okay. Yeah, for your island. So, and then we'll have the broadcast schedule for the for the shows, which are being edited right now, and we're re uh, you know rebranding everything, and then so, hopefully the end of the summer we can start filming the actual show and we have some great uh shoot locations already uh, we've scouted and stuff mm -hmm. yes. sorry. Go, go rules. Uh, i'm sorry warrior island rules sure oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes i can tell you, know? you, can tell you a funny i can tell you a funny dana white story if you'd like to hear it okay oh, okay. okay exclusive so <laughs> dana, me backstage all the time at the press conferences the ufc and then i came up with the idea for warrior island so i started creating things and I, I noticed he started following me in all the social media then when i um then when i started putting some of the comic book stuff out they did some comic stuff so i decided to create a character for him in the comic book and he's called cambridge it looks just like dana white he lives in las vegas he runs the <laughs> Evil league but his name is cambridge so last year when covid hit they came up with a thing called Fighter Island. So my trademark attorneys serve their legal department that we own anything called Fight Island or, or you know, Fighter Island or anything about fighters on islands. Mm -hmm. So they said that they, they, they didn't think that we had any kind of uh, case, but we sent them all our trademarks. They then sl uh, slightly shifted it over weekend from Fight Fighter Island to Fight Island. They changed the name of what they were doing on ESPN. So now uh -huh. I've in the new episode, I have him throwing a chair through his window in Las Vegas saying, I want that island. <laughs> <laughs> so, Grandmaster Cliff, um, we, were, we were planning on bring you, bringing you on before because we talked to Robert Parhan mm -hmm. and you were in, in his oh, last movie. Yeah. Yes. And you know we're still planning to bring you on because we want to talk about the hangman, but today we're concentrating more on the on the island. Mm -hmm. We're staying on the island. We gotta stay on the island. Yeah. Don't we don't want to get voted off the island. I just want to read this little um, paragraph here, just in in more addition to Warrior Island. It says the Warrior Island series is an exceptional tool to draw in youth to the values we need to instill in today's generation and the ones to follow. Yes, that's right. That is awesome. Indeed. This series uses the power of good storytelling and beautiful graphic art to reach today's youth and truly teach them the steps to becoming stronger mentally and physically. That's it. That is the key. I remember having um, doing those those coloring and activity books when I was younger, and I think that's been missing. That's been missing. You know, when you go into the doctor's office, even before COVID hit, you go into the doctor's office, there'd be all these coloring and activity books and things like that, and you don't really see that anymore. So I think that's a really really good idea. We should pick some up and put it in our in our gym in gymnastics for the you know the little ones that watch their older siblings. So Barry Crawford, yeah, we're going to make that a thing. Barry Crawford is asking, does Grandma still do any kata or form? Of course, I still do my Chinese goju forms. There you go. That's an affirmative, Barry. Yeah, that's that's a yes. <laughs> I thought so. You seen the shaping? How you just come out? <laughs> and next comment. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know this gentleman, Hector Martinez? Yeah, my, my step yeah. Hector is a Bruce Lee collector. Oh, okay. And uh, Bruce Lee, and uh, you know, so we sing at uh, Orban all the time. So you know, t we we should tell them the story about the time that I tried to sell your Bruce Lee stuff. Oh boy. <laughs> 
What were we doing? I think we were getting ready to move. We were moving, yeah. and she wanted to sell uh, this old process that I have that, you, well, I have a whole bunch, a collection. Mm -hmm. And my wife said, what is this? We should get rid of this. I said we could sell it. I didn't say throw it in the trash. Bruce Lee, remember, back. <laughs> What's that, James? Bruce Lee memorabilia hits back. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. And we still have it all. We didn't throw anything or sell anything. So we still have it all. You know, <laughs> we and uh, when I saw you in the uh, movie, in the Black Dragon, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how fast your kicks were. That's the camera. That was the camera? I think they were slowing you down. <laughs> no. You, you know, think it's, yeah, cameras I'm, have a tendency of making you look faster than you are. Really? And sound effects, it's it's all fake. All <laughs> motion that's in films is fake. It really is. Well, I mean, I know, was a martial yeah. artist before I got into films, but most of the people I worked in Hong Kong with in films, they were not martial artists. Hmm. Interesting. They're stone fighters. Most had no martial arts experience. Wow. We just had good choreographers. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I should have done that. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> telling you. Well, I can guarantee you this there will be nobody on the island that doesn't have fighting experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, uh, how, how do they make it to the, to the island? Do they, the, um, we uh, have of tryouts and fights um, uh, in the previous Global Proving Ground League, as well as tryout videos, the most uh, fan votes uh, get them onto the island. So they view the fights, they view the um, the YouTube channel, the uh, Warrior Island Comics YouTube channel, and they click like for their favorite uh, fighters. And mm -hmm. then, um, then when they actually get to the island, there's interaction with the fighters there. Um, as they're training and as they're competing and fighting on the island, fans at home will be able to give them um, rewards or take things away from them, like more sleep or a massage or better food or less food or less water. So wow. there will be built um, either gracefully or painfully. <laughs> I think this is going to be huge. Yeah, yeah. Have you shot some of, some of it already? We filmed some of the B-roll um, at Turtle Bay where we first met Ron in 2012, okay. but we've also felt, uh, filmed a few other places uh, I cannot divulge, or we'll have to, uh, you know, put you into witness protection. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and those grandmaster, are you there as an advisor or a, a coach? I, I, I am a technical advisor, um, uh -huh. but you know, when I met James, and I think it was 2012. Yeah, it was. Um, at Turtle Bay. I had just moved to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I really didn't know anyone. So when I ran into James and Helson, I found a home because I've been training with Helson since then. Wow. Wow. You know, and I finally made Purple Belt after like uh, six or seven years straight. You know, a couple of days a week. Amazing. I started competing at 74. Yes. I saw, I saw one of them. I'm 78 now. And I can't mm -hmm. wait for things to open up because I want to compete before I get too old to compete. You know? <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> so Helson said to me, Thursday <laughs> night, I went to a seminar with Helson. And Helson said, in five years, I'll make Black Belt. So now I have a timeline where I can really start to put some more effort in. You know wow. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because I want to compete as a Black Belt at least once. But as my wife said to me today, I'll be 83 when I make Black Belt. I think I'll be able to compete at least one time as a black man, Absolutely. Which is my goal. That, that, that is is my a great, that's a great goal. I don't really believe in age too much, but I believe in people. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, does I, make a difference. I keep going, moving. Yeah. Absolutely. I went to the Worlds a couple of years ago in Vegas. Uh huh. I lost my second match. The competition with mm -hmm. the Worlds is really, really tough. Mm -hmm. Really, really tough. You really have to train jujitsu to understand what you're watching, because when you watch two high-level black belts um, compete, 
It looks like they're moving really slow, but it's like yeah. that. they're so yeah. smart. They're so smart, and they know. I I remember when Helsinki gave it. Me, and, mm-hmm. and I'm a big, I'm a big strong guy, really big and strong. And Helsinki was a little little guy, like 150, and he made me feel like a little baby. I mean, there's I like they <laughs> hate when he uses me to demonstrate. <laughs> Oh my God! So, so you've been doing uh, grappling things since uh, 2012. Since 2012, I've been doing it two to three days a week. That's and, amazing. And oh you doing God. Wing Chun now? I feel like um, I, I'm doing Wing Chun with with um, Grandmaster Samuel Kwok. Samuel Kwok, um, yeah. It's I, actually, I, like I started it. Wing Chun in the 60s. Right. Bruce Lee introduced me to the style. Uh-huh. He turned me into Duncan Leung. Duncan Leung turned me on to Jason Lau. Jason Lau turned me on to Sifu Lian Ting. Mm-hmm. Lian Ting turned oh, yeah. me on to Samuel Park because they're 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 dojo brothers. Brother. Right. Hey Ron, I was the talking to Jason. Of students of Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Okay? Hey Ron, I talked to Jason a couple weeks ago. He definitely gave us the go ahead for his uh, filming at his school. His school is amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. Hey, you see the temple? Huh? Yeah, I think he's one of the coolest guy. I mean, when he comes in with the with, with the, the dark glasses and the, and and the leather and the jacket, you know, and the, <laughs> I've known Jason fifty five years. Oh great my guy. gosh, really great guy. Wow, wow. You see, looking at people like you makes me it gives people like me hope because I keep moving. You know, I tell I tell my students, look, if you come and you go to a room and you see someone laying down on the ground, the first thing you want to know is, are they breathing? Mm-hmm. And number two, can they move? Mm-hmm. That's Tai Chi right there. Are you breathing? <laughs> I'm moving. So if you can't do any of that, you know, you, you got problems. <laughs> I will probably do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu until I die. You know, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, it's not easy. The young guys are, are pretty tough, you know. Mm-hmm. As I roll with these purple belts and blue belts and brown belts. Ross, your training tough. partner. Huh? Tell them how big your training partner is. Oh, my favorite training partner, his name is Alejandro. He's six foot eight, 340 pounds. <laughs> I tried to choke him with a rear naked choke. I had the choke on for two minutes and couldn't finish it. <laughs> his neck was. And he picked me up like I was a sandwich and just dropped me on my back. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's like Moses Power. He's my favorite. Six foot eight? Part. And he's only 35 years old. Oh, he's a baby. <laughs> Imagine six foot eight, six foot nine, 340. I can't even. You know, I can't even he's so strong. He puts you in side control. You think you're under a truck. <laughs> wow. 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 That yeah. his forearm is like my thigh. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> God. There's a guy back in Manhattan. Um, they used to call Rhino. Rhino. Oh, Rhino. They used to call him Rhino because every time we spar with him, even if you blocked him, your arms would be so sore. Yeah. It would be swollen, yeah, because he was big. You punch, punch and kick, you know, and you black him. <laughs> Sometimes when he does one of those uh, single or double legs, that's a lot of weight coming on your knees and legs. I could so only he, try to He's fast. You know, it's like getting hit by a car. The <laughs> shot is just it's amazing. It's amazing. How do you feel when you roll, roll with other people after rolling with him? I always roll when he's in the dojo. I always make sure that I roll with him. Mm-hmm. But I always get three or four rolls in. Mm-hmm. I always do, you know. Um, minimum three rolls. You know? Ron either has us do six minute rounds or 10 minute rounds. I like the 10 minute rounds myself. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite. A lot of guys Ron, don't is, like it. Is Ron's school still in the same location? Yeah. He had 22 guys in class. Yeah, and that's that's amazing. 
so good. The roles were so, so that, that good. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Nelson taught a seminar also. Tuesday and Thursday he was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Daryl's comment. He made a comment earlier. Paul Hunt's daughter, Jessica, is married to an MMA fighter named, is that Jay? Jay, Jay, yeah, ja, ja Jay Santos. Santos. They call him the Tasmanian devil. I've seen in a, a number of videos, he's the greatest guy. <laughs> they all, I don't all know they do make it. Is he good? Uh, then there's a video on the uh, Warrior Island Comics uh, YouTube channel. We'll post it and get people starting to uh, vote for him. To vote for, uh, for that guy? Yeah. Great. Oh, okay. Great. Then this Great, thank you for the comment, Daryl. That was cool. The, yeah, and these things. They sent it to me at, at warriorisland.info, too. James at warriorisland.info. Cool. Oh, cool. Cool. So yeah. for everybody, there's no, we don't exclude anybody. Just like martial arts, if anyone wants to learn, if anyone wants to try out, you know, we're, we keep everything the same. Mm hmm. Well, it, it shows that age does not matter. Mm -hmm. It does uh, matter. It does yeah. matter. I hear that all the time, and mostly guys in their 50s and 60s saying uh, age doesn't matter. Yes, it does. <laughs> Do not be fooled by that. That's that's a great Wait, fantasy I'm thinking. I think it does because it hurts. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fantasy <laughs> thinking that we, we call that mental masturbation. You know, that's what Sensei oh, Urban okay. told me it was. But when you're 78, I feel every role that I roll with these 22 year old purple belts and brown belts, mm -hmm. every single one of them. And I'm hurt every class, every class. How, how you get to get through my tongue, had five stitches on the top, two on the bottom, <laughs> I have five ribs broken from the side control. I've had a knee on the belly with two more ribs broken on the other side. So I, in the past nine years, I, 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 I understand. It is not an easy sport. And I've seen guys in their 40s and 50s come to the school, train for a couple of months, and we never see them again. How does your wife handle it? Well, she's already used to me coming home limping. Or <laughs> <laughs> I come home, I need to hit the shower, and I need to put my legs up, I need to chill. Because sometimes when I'm finished rolling, I'm really hurt. Yeah. I'm really, you know, I can hardly walk down the stairs and there's about 20 stairs to walk down. I have to hold the banister or I will fall and knock myself out, for real. I'm normally that burnt after class. I fell asleep at the bus stop waiting for the bus to go home. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Woke up. <laughs> so <laughs> so what, what, makes you, what makes you keep going? Yeah. I can't stop. I, I'm not the shark. If I stop swimming, I die. People my age don't do anything. Mm -hmm. That's why you die. You, you die when you stop doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. People think that what I do is, is, is too much for someone at my age. But I'm already pain conscious to what is capable to happen. You know? When I did karate and kung fu, guys were punching and kicking and all that kind of stuff. Well, here that never happens. So there's no punching, no kicking. It's all manipulation. And mm -hmm. I, it's taken Great. me nine years, but I'm already in a point where if I put someone in side control, they're going to be there for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I've yeah. got my defense pretty good. I don't submit that many people. I do normally a couple of times per, per round, but mm -hmm. normally, my thing is to keep myself from getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's the major thing. Do not get hurt. And right. when I hurt yeah. myself, I hurt myself because I'll do three rounds. I'll feel off like Superman. And someone will say, Ron, let's get one more. I'll go in. I'm, my neck will be messed up. My shoulder will be messed up. My ankle, you know. I learned now. Three rolls, no matter what the time limit is, three is enough for me. Mm. That's okay. That's, that's why, that, home, that's why on Warrior Island, the Grand Masters are, you know, going to be overseeing coaches like Silvio Simak and and Steve mm -hmm. and the younger coaches will will get down and dirty with the fighters 
while the grandmasters oversee the uh, you know making sure the team code is being learned. I don't mind rolling with anybody. I just sure. don't want to, uh, to injure myself. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? Helson told me that I should not be competing anymore. He told me that Tuesday night. He said, what are you doing that for? You don't need to do that. Uh -huh. I probably don't need to do it, but I want to do it, and I enjoy it. Uh -huh. I truly, truly enjoy it. You know, I go to these events. I sit down. I close my eyes. They call my name. I go in the ring, and it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Win, lose, or draw, I learn. And, and win. Right. right. You know, it no longer matters whether I win. I just try to do the best that I can in that time frame. Mm -hmm. And that works for me. It really does work for me. Mm -hmm. I, I was caught up for about five years. Oh, I'm not submitting enough people. Uh, I shouldn't fall for that again or this or that. That's all. That's all that mental masturbation stuff I was saying. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do the best that you can with what you have. I have a 78-year-old body. It works pretty good, but it's 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 delicate. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not as durable as yours or yours. You know, you put oh, no, another 30 years on yours and you'll see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, the power is there, the speed is there, the endurance is there. But the machine is not the same. It's 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 an old car. Good good car. It still gets me where I want to go. But it's not that Maserati that I had when I was twenty two. Mm -hmm. I had when I was thirty. Mm -hmm. And the Lamborghini at fifty, which was my best. I think I was my best at fifty. Wow. Okay. My best ever, I think, was fifty. That's why I went to the UFC at 51 years old. Yes, I saw and to do it. I had to see what it was. I had to. You mm -hmm. know, serious martial artists could not do that. I right. had to. Everyone I said Dan Cleef was lost his mind. Mm -hmm. It hurt. It's and that, 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 you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. I broke my ankle a week before I fought Hoist, and I went anyway. I was wrestling with a 240-pound wrestler, and uh, he suplexed. My ankle hit the, the, the mat, uh, the, the frame on the mat. I mm -hmm. broke my ankle one week before I fought Hoist, and I had to go. I had to. Imagine if I had said, oh, I'm not going to do it, I, I, uh, whatever. That, I took that, my ace band uh, off to go in. Right. <laughs> They're there, so he's scared. He don't want to come. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, while the reason why I was saying about the age doesn't matter is because some people use that as an excuse to start doing things. Oh, okay. So many people use age as an excuse for not being right. able to do anything anymore. And that's total caca. That's you know, right. I see these guys in the dojo now, 50 years old, talking about, oh, my back is hurting. You don't know what a big back is, guy. That's but true. That, that's yeah, true. That's absolutely true. That that's why that's why I said that you you make no excuse with all the things that you said. That's why I said that you are in inspiration because you you're feeling all this pain, but you still say I got to do it. That is how can so, I stop? If uh, I stop, I'll put on a hundred pounds and I will uh, die of a heart attack. Wow. Guaranteed, because I don't have the best diet. I eat junk food with my fifteen year old son. You know what I mean? Good we, go, we go to McDonald's or something, somewhere, whatever. But I'm trying to do better by really exercising more. And the real thing is not to be stressed. Mm -hmm. Calm yourself down, you know, try to eat the best stuff. My wife just gives me salads every day. and She's really having a very positive effect on me, you know. Um, most women or wives never really push the point of this is what you need to maintain what you have. No more I'm, I'm so very happy uh, about that. I'm not the best student, but I try. <laughs> so James, how did you meet your lovely lady? Nicole, I met Nicole. It's a, it's a great way I met her as I go to my chiropractor for years and he lets me put my business cards on the um, on his counter, like the check-in in the in the office. 
And there was this massage therapist there that, that worked at the chiropractic office. And um, she's a little bit of a, a neat freak, OCD. She kept moving her cards in front of my cards, but all she was doing was organizing the desk. So I think, who's this person messing with my car? So I had to meet this person that kept moving my business cards around. So um, I got started talking to her, and then she started to come out to some of the fights. And it just, you know, it's seven years later, it's it's wonderful. You know, she just moved in here now, so we're we're together, and uh, we promised right. ourselves short forever. Uh, That's awesome. That's and that, she's I, she, is she working martial art? Because I tried to get my wife to. She's um she's very into fitness and, and she's done some some kickboxing with me in the gym. She is a character Ginger Lotus, but she she is a real life empath. So she has unbelievable intuition and um, very in touch with nature and energy and all that. So it's uh she is the true empath Tiki. Oh, so she told you to do this show, right? Because you know. <laughs> well, let me put it this way: she didn't the show when I said I was coming out to the gym to do it, she didn't tell me not to do it. And that says the volume. <laughs> That's just good. That's just good. And Grandmaster, how did you um, meet your lovely wife? Uh, I met her on uh, the beach in Waikiki. Of course. Um, she was uh, in divorce land. I was in divorce land. And uh, we got married three years ago. Mm on the beach how insane right yeah uh, someone at 75 years old can still find love wow i mean wow. That's, yeah. now that's that's one of those age doesn't mean anything stories you know the uh, other stuff is different but this um it, it's fascinating it's fascinating how how it's all meant to be it, there is no it's all fate it's all predestined we have nothing right. to do with it. We right. may be in the right place at the right time, but we have nothing to do with it. They make the choices, you know? That, that, is true. that was it. Oh, where did James go? James went out. He'll probably pop back in. Um, yeah, I was uh, so lucky, though. I mean, yeah. I've been married before, and mm -hmm. uh, this is by far the best. Mm -hmm. By far the best. I'm happier than I ever remember being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Magic. That is wonderful. I mean, I mean that's that's pretty wonderful, you know. That's amazing. Yes. I I, I don't remember that. being as happy as I am now. She makes I, me I happy. Your, your, um, that's a tradition T-shirt, right? Yes. Love it's it. A Don Wilson tradition T-shirt. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep, yeah. Yeah. We have a couple of. We those. have a couple Very of. Cool. They, they're James. We you back. <laughs> so James. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, my my phone was dying. That's okay. <laughs> Drop the website one more time so people know where to get um, merchandise, comic book, etc. Yeah, it's warriorisland.info, I-N-F-O. And if I was to say one more thing before going tonight, I want everyone to know that Warrior Island is not mine. It's everyone's. Mm. Okay. That's wonderful. That, that, that's awesome. I love that. I like what you're doing with the bullying. I, mm -hmm. I'm very much into that. Uh, I had never thrown anyone out of our gym, um, except for one girl that was bullying an, another little girl. And I said, no, you can't stay, you know, in, in gymnastics, you know, we yeah. had, we had to throw her out because we don't, we don't like that. Yeah. I mean, we educate them first. We try to tell them that's incorrect, but if you continue to do that, then we can't deal with that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. Well, this, it has to be like, Pleasure talking to pleasure. you both. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to give me an email address or a mailing address. I want to send you a copy of my documentary, The Hangman. Yes. We finally got distribution for it. Wow. So, oh, good, good, good. It's almost awesome. a year. Good. Uh, five I'm, years to produce it, but. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, well, you know, we want to bring you back and, and talk about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we get the video, we'll, um, we'll, we'll have to connect yeah. and, and do that again. Yeah, yeah for, sure. for sure. Okay, so, you know, uh, yeah, send your friend request. I think I, you know, I follow you, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can message me. Yeah. yeah. We'll message you that way. Yeah. Or we, or we do it today. That's such oh. an honor. 
However. Well, it was a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, and so thank much. you James, for allowing me to be part of Warrior Island, my brother. Wow, yes. Yes. Thank I you can't for wait for sure. to be done. I want to have from from row seat and we go. That's right. <laughs> well, I'll get we'll go back on the show and let you know the broadcast schedule. Cool. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just you know, we've been talking to Chicago practice, honey. <laughs> Well, you're gonna. You, it's, it'll be a good seat, front row seat. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, James. Thank you, Grandmaster Van Cleve. It was such an honor to have you both on. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Well, oh, <laughs> mahalo. 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 Yeah. Oh, wow! 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 That was that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That was pretty Green cool. Green through. Mm hmm. You know, every time we saw him, you know, he was always um, very short. I remember talk. the first time that we ran into him together mm -hmm. at um, Urban. the Urban Action Showcase yeah. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and you you fangirled. Do you know? I what did. That, do you know? What, yeah, you know. What I don't know means. what that means, but go ahead. That's Fan, okay. you, you guys, our, our viewers probably know what fangirl means. He he literally fangirled because this was like. Um, you know, someone who he had admired for for many years since his childhood, and he like went he went crazy. Mm -hmm. This calm, demure gentleman. Yes, he fangirled. And well, you know what I wanted to well, oh, you know, the fact that he looked at me and said, "I remember you," and he I only seen me a couple of times, and I was like, "What?" That's crazy. You know, I don't. I was going to show a photo of when. We first met oh, because I had, big, I had a big. I had a. Do you have it afro. in the in the I, in the banner? I don't know if it's there, but let me let me take a look. Uh, no, it's not. Um, it's not there. Oh. No, it's not there. Um, I was gonna say maybe search it. Hey guys, um, you know what I wanted to to I wanted to plug um, Dajau. Someone commented, great interview. Love the part of age is isn't a number. Thank you, Barry, for joining us. And you know, um, uh, Grandmaster Van Cleef was talking about pain and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. And I have to plug this 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 um, product, Iron Palm. I'm sure you guys can see that it's uh, Deet Dajau. Mm -hmm. This stuff is nothing short of amazing now when my husband first bought this um we bought it in chinatown on, right. Ma on mott street in the yeah. store that we frequent mm -hmm. whenever we go to chinatown and you i don't know if you guys you can't really see it that well you, you, you can see it but um it basically looks like dirty water with <laughs> with with grass in it <laughs> Um, yeah, so and and it does not smell good at all. Um, you're not supposed to drink it, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't but, smell good at all. And um, I never wanted to use this because we have other products that we use, other natural products that we use for pain, and I would use that. None of them really smell that great, but this one really has an unpleasant odor, yeah. And um, I, I hurt my we have this mas foot massager thing. Mm -hmm. And I put my feet in it yesterday, and I think because I was on my feet all day Saturday, we had such a long day, I think, I don't know, something was already gone, going on with my feet. So I put my feet in the foot massage yesterday, and I told mm -hmm. you this today. And then a couple hours after that, my big toe, it was swollen a little bit. Wow. So I put some of that on last night. Mm -hmm. Then I put some on again this morning. And when I woke up, I was like, Okay, how am I gonna walk on my foot? Mm -hmm. And also Saturday, I told you I I hurt my wrist spotting, mm -hmm. really bad, really right. bad. And I, I have an issue with my wrists anyway. I don't know why. Um, and I couldn't move it, couldn't move it um for the rest of Saturday evening, and part of Sunday, and then last night also, I put it on my wrist. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the night, I was able to do this. Right. I was able to do that. Well, it's remember bad. last last time I hurt my wrist, I couldn't go like that. Mm -hmm. And then I used it and the, the next, I did a few points and I said, wow, it's still hurting. And I thought it was from practicing the piano mm -hmm. and, and then doing all this spotting. Yeah. Um, 
so then I put it on the, the next day, it was gone. And But this has happened more than once. Um, more than once. And I, I where, said to you this morning, you remember, I'm like, what is mm -hmm. in this? Because <laughs> it doesn't look like much of anything. It looks like dirty water with grass in it. <laughs> Smell like dirty water too. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you said there's, you want to tell them what, the, what's in it? Well, this actually formula out there that, you know, that you could look up and... Yeah, all different kinds it, of Chinese uh, herbs is yes. what, you, what you said. Yeah. It doesn't tell you what's in it. Nope. It doesn't tell you. It says takwa. It, tell, it comes... tells you what, what, what it's good for. I tried this. Um, mm -hmm. Dita Jiao aids you... in relief of symptoms associated with rheumatism, arthritis, strains, sprains, muscular aches, bruises, and fatigue. And mm -hmm. I, I I swear by this. At first, well, the Helios is still really good. We love Helios as well. That's don't, use it, don't use it for COVID-19. Don't... <laughs> don't, don't drink <laughs> it. <laughs> Don't drink it. Just, yeah, but when you use it, you really have to like scrub your hands after because you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Yuck. Okay, so that was a very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. I look, I didn't know how I was going to handle you know having him on because, like you said, I, mm -hmm. I was a big fan. I used to follow him since I was fangirl. Um, little read his books. Yeah, and. You know, of course, James, you know, you know, such, he reached out such to, a really nice persona. And, yeah, know, he reached, really when he reached out to me because he, you know, when we started at the new page with uh, Twit Talks mm -hmm. and say, if you want to talk about this, give me a ring. And I, and of course, we had a lot of guests lined up and yeah. I said, oh, man, I can't wait. And I love all the, all the guests that we have yeah. so far. It's, it's great when people are reaching out. Right. That's good. You know, because we know they have something, a story to tell or something yes. to plug. And I love um, like with this, with this anti-bullying. And, and one of the things I wanted to mention before also is it says, um, okay, so it says um, we teach, it's an anti-bully program, obviously. Mm -hmm. We teach bullies to become protectors instead of offenders. That's right. Mm -hmm. and that is a good thing. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. I'm sure we talk to them again. Yeah. Um, we'll let you know ahead of time. Make sure you tell all your friends. If you watching this, share it share, on your share, page. Share. I think that's um, the one thing that we're getting from this is that they giving good good advice to people. Mm. You know. Yeah, wonderful. I, I love that. I love what um, I love that. Master Van Cleef was saying too. Inspiration. You know, like what Barry said, age is isn't a number. So I don't want to hear you complaining. I don't. Com have you ever heard me complain? No, he I don't complain. He doesn't. He doesn't. You know. Anyway, people. Make thanks. sure you guys go to warrioriland.info oh, so wait. you can pick up some of um the merchandise. You know, I really, I can't wait to get some of those coloring um activity books for the gym. We could just put them in the gym. You know what I forgot? I am so mad at myself what right now. What did you forget? If people are still watching, check, check this out. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to play a little bit of this. Hi, I'm Ron Van Cleef, the Black Dragon. 52-year-old Ron Van Cleef is a martial arts legend. In the 70s, he won the World Kung Fu and Karate Championships five times. And as the Black Dragon, he became one of the biggest stars in martial arts movies. Most people live a very mundane, boring life, so they want to see something different. They want to see the good guy defeat the bad guys. They want to see beautiful women. They want to see great uh, stunts. And that's what has fascinated people in America with uh, action films. But the <laughs> so you see, now when we bring we it back to, yeah, on, I was going to say we should definitely yeah, yeah because this. All the videos that I wanted to show, but I, you know, I forgot. I got so excited when I saw him pop you up. Saw I him forgot. Pop in, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, every man in the 60s, Thank 70s, you. and 80s that lived went through a transition from afro to flat top to the to, Jason to Statham. Yeah. Uh, my my Jason Statham. <laughs> this is the Jason Statham. <laughs> okay. We say goodbye twice already, right? We did a couple times. Bye, people. If you have anything to say, any comment, just mm -hmm. any questions. Remember, the videos will be posted on our Facebook page, Facebook page, Tweet Talks, or you can go to our YouTube channel, Tweet Talks. Awesome, Dara.
Thank you guys for joining us. We hope to see you again next Monday, same time, same channel. And as always, <laughs> love, peace, peace. I, and I have harmony. Money. <laughs> I wanted to see Chi remember. Of okay. Course. Bye bye, people. Bye.